Hey everyone, I'm David Herman. And I'm Justin Nieto. And we are developers on Android Studio. Now, earlier this year at I.O., other members of our team gave a tips and tricks talk about editing your project in Android Studio. It is excellent. However, as developers, we all know that there are some days you just spend way more time in your debugger than you do in your code editor. So to that end, Justin and I, we went around our team. We asked everybody for their favorite debugging features. Uh, we don't have a lot of time up here, so we narrow them down to what were the essential tips that we think will be easy to incorporate into your debugging flow. Now, in order to showcase these features, we put together a simple game inspired by the new Android 10 version. Rules simply are you grab 10s, you get points, you run into too many desserts, which represent old versions, it's game over. Uh, the core of this game is a loop that tries to run at 60 frames a second, where it uh, updates all of the uh, objects in the game, and then it renders them. I'm going to assume that your own app is uh, not quite the same as this one, but don't worry, all of the features that we're going to share here will apply for any project. Uh, now, this is all going to be a demo from this point forward, and we have a lot to get into, so I'm going to get out of the way and kick it over to Justin. Right. So um, as David mentioned, we're going to talk about a lot of debugging tips, but if you're anything like me, you're going to sit through this whole presentation and then go home and still use printf statements everywhere to see what's going on. <laughs> That's OK. So we have tips for you, too. Um, we're actually going to start here. Uh, so if we open up Logcat, which is where all of our, um, our Android logs surface in the IDE, um, you'll see that when we start the app, so we have two things going on here. We're logging the FPS, like the frames per second rate, uh, every second. And then when Android dies at the end of the game, we also log the score that you got through the session. Um, so you might notice right away that the, there's kind of some bloat here, things like the date and the threads that we don't really care about. One thing you might not know is that you can go to this settings bar over here and remove some of this information so that we can cut it down to just the tag and the message that we care about. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so even with this, you might notice that we have all of these spammy logs, um, and they're kind of getting in the way of us seeing these high score messages. Um, so what we can do there is actually search here to filter things down. Um, and this is nice, but if this is a super useful search that you do all the time or you have multiple searches, you might want to actually save this so you can come back to it later. So what we can do to make that happen is to go here and add a custom filter. So if we go over here and edit filter configurations, I did this before. Um, but so we can type in, so in this case, I'm looking at high scores. Uh, I can type in the substring that I'm looking for. And now I have the same filtering effect, but I can jump back and forth between different ones. Um, so for now, I'll go back to the whole, the whole log set. Um, so that's great. But maybe we really want to look at every log in the game. We just don't want these spammy FPS logs. Um, so what we can do here is highlight the substring that's relevant between all these different spammy things that we don't care about right-click on it, and go to fold lines like this. And this creates a filter for us that will collapse all of these messages together and leave just the things we care about. Um, so if I do this, you'll see that now we're just looking at the scores and some other information from the emulator. Um, and if we need to look at this information later, we can always expand it or collapse it. Um, so now that we've got all the, the logging bits out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some code. In, oops, sorry. In particular, we're going to start at uh, this loop that happens every, every frame of the game loop, um, where we go through all the items and uh, reason over them. Uh, so I should, since it happens every frame, I should be able to set a breakpoint here. Um, and when I start debugging, this should hit pretty immediately. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, no. Um, OK, so it didn't do that. Just kidding. Um, so yeah, I did this on purpose. Uh, I hit the Run button when I started the app, instead of hitting the Debug button. Um, and while I did it on purpose to demonstrate the next feature I want to show, uh, this actually happens to me quite a bit in real life. And it can be super frustrating to stop the app, start it in debug mode again, and then work your way all the way back to the state that you're trying to debug from. Um, so what you can do instead is click this icon over here and attach the debugger to the already running process. And when I do that, you'll see that we hit the breakpoint pretty immediately. Um, so that being said, we have our breakpoint. Um, but say the bug that we're tracing down is related to when Android actually hits one of these desserts. Um, it's not good to have a breakpoint right here because it gets hit every frame, and we never get up to the dessert that we're trying to hit to repro. Um, so instead, what we might want to do is go down to the part of the code where we've actually determined that we've hit a dessert. Um, one thing that's nice, because I don't need this breakpoint anymore, I can just drag it to the line that I care about. 
um, and it gets rid of it from the old line, and then I can run. And when I collide, now I, I get it on collisions. Um, that's great, but maybe the bug that I'm actually chasing down is only related to the last dessert that I hit, you know, when Android dies at the end. Um, so for that, we have the same problem. I have to stop every time I hit a dessert. It gets tedious. So what we can do is what's called setting a conditional breakpoint. So I can right-click on this breakpoint in the debugger, add my condition, um, and I can put any Boolean expression in Kotlin here. Uh, and if it evaluates to true when the code hits it, then we'll, we'll, we'll catch at the breakpoint. Um, so in this case, I'm going to type you know, player.health is equal to 1, because we're about to decrement it for the last time in the case that we care about. And when I go through that, we won't catch until, so we hit twice and we didn't catch. Now I hit the last one and I, I've caught the breakpoint and I only get the case that I care about. So to take this example even further, if we're talking about, um, say the bug that we're tracing is actually last dessert that you hit, but when we render the hearts. Um, so if I jump down into our render loop, um, where we make that determination between broken and full hearts, um, I could set a breakpoint here, and because I've already hit the other conditional breakpoint, when I run, it'll go through to the rendering step, and that's fine. But if I want to check this condition you know, multiple times, I want to cycle through this in case the, the bug doesn't repro every time, um, this isn't a great thing to do, to leave this unconditional breakpoint here, because I have the same problem. Every frame, I'm going back through. What I can do to get around this is right-click on the breakpoint again, open up the More menu, and go to this section here where we can disable the breakpoint until the first one that we had was hit. So now we end up with, I'll let the game run through. Now we end up with, I'm not stopping every time because the breakpoint's disabled. And then when I hit the last dessert, our first breakpoint catches. And because we've hit the first breakpoint, it's activated the other dependent breakpoint. And when I run through, we land there in the render loop. So, um, what you might have noticed during all these things is uh, when we right-click on the, let's keep waiting, when we right-click on these breakpoints and start working with them, you'll notice the suspend tab here. And so far, we've had all selected for all of this, and that means that when the currently executing thread encounters the breakpoint, we will just stop every thread in the application, and that, that pauses the whole game state, and that can be useful for the bug like we were talking before with rendering the hearts. Um, but if you're working in a multi-threaded application and you're tracing down some really tricky synchronization issue, you might also want to try suspending just the thread that encountered the breakpoint. Um, so to highlight this functionality, we have a section of the game that's responsible for when Android dies, simulating sending off the score to some server somewhere. Um, in our case, we just delay and, and, and log some stuff. But um, if I set a breakpoint here in the background thread where we're doing our network call, right-click it, and tell it to, dispen to suspend on just the thread, then what I can do is play through my game, which is over again, um, play through my game, and you'll notice that because I died before, I'm already in the background thread, but the UI thread is still active, which means I can cycle through the whole game again and get myself in a state where, say, I have um, you know, multiple network calls queued, and I can try to reproduce some kind of tricky synchronization issue there. Um, so, for the next, the next tip I want to show you, the rest of the breakpoints that we have set aren't particularly useful. So I'm going to go ahead and try to disable them here. Um, so what I can do to do that right is right click and then deselect enabled, and that's fine. Um, but what might be handier is to use alt click, which will just toggle these guys on and off, um, or option click if you're on Mac. Uh, so all that being said, I'll go to my last tip which isn't that line, it's this one. Um, so this is the, art, the part of the code where we determine the score, score multiplier, which is this, this guy up here um, that determines you know, how much your points are multiplied by when you hit a 10. Uh, let's say I need to track this value over you know, all sorts of times in the app, like, like very, very many times. I can set a breakpoint here, and I can run through my app. We have the same problem. I hit this guy all the time when the game's running. Um, I hit this guy all the time, and then I have to chase down the information I'm looking for through this whole menu, um, which can be tedious. What I really want to do is, is log the, the multiplier value here, but I don't want to drop logs all over, like log statements all over my code. It's kind of a pain. Um, so what, what we can do instead is leave our breakpoint and disable suspension altogether. So now whenever we hit this breakpoint, we're not going to stop the app. Then I can go over here to this evaluate and log section, and I can type in any Kotlin expression. So in this case, uh, my multiplier is you know, score.multiplier, 
And now when, when the thread encounters this breakpoint, it doesn't stop. It just evaluates this expression, logs it to the console, and moves on. If you don't need that much information, you just need to check to see if we go through a certain code path, you can deselect this and instead choose to have a breakpoint hit message, and it'll just tell you that you, you hit this breakpoint at this time. Um, and in fact, that's so handy that there's a shortcut for it. If you shift click in the gutter, it'll create one of these for you. So those are all the tips that I wanted to share. I'm gonna invite David back over to tell you about some of the ones that he knows. All right, have you ever found yourself working on a bug where you're not making progress, so you decide to put it aside for a bit and then work on a second bug, but while you're working on that bug, you keep hitting the breakpoints from the first bug? You're not ready to delete those breakpoints yet, uh, so you just keep disabling one at a time. Well, it turns out there's a better way using breakpoint groups. So I'm gonna go here. Let's imagine that this was the breakpoint we just hit. Right click on the breakpoint, go to more. And this, now you see all the breakpoints up here. You can multi-select them, right click, create a new group for them. You can name this uh, after the bug that you're working on. I'm just gonna call this Justin. Now that they're grouped, <laughs> now that they're grouped, you can uh, uh, enable them, uh, toggle them on and off with a single click. And when you're done with the bug, you could also just delete all of them as well. All right, I'm gonna jump back into the code. Now, for some context, this is the function responsible for initializing the current item. So I'm gonna let this run a couple times so you can see it. So when the item is off the top of the screen, we don't yet know if it's gonna be a random dessert or a number 10. Now, let's say here, I wanna step into this generate random type method, but I accidentally step over it. Now, I may have stepped over on purpose uh, also, but the, maybe the result was a little bit confusing to me. Uh, I didn't expect it. So what I wish I could do in retrospect was step into it. Uh, well, if you're targeting a device that's running at least Android 10, you can click on this drop frame button, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull you out of the current method and put you right back to before it started, so when you step into it again, you get your second chance. Uh, yeah. Now, this feature is not a time machine, so if I was in the middle of a long function and it had done a lot of intermediate work, for example, modified the state of this current class, that doesn't get undone when you drop frame. This is not a deal breaker, it's just something to be aware of, and despite that, this feature has saved me a ton of times. All right, now I'd like to bring your focus down here to the variables window. So this is the item class, and this particular instance of an item is ID 10231. So as you can see on the screen, there's already a couple of items there, but let's say I just wanna follow the life cycle of just this particular item. Now, uh, what I might have done in the past is write down 10231 on a piece of paper, but that's a little error prone. Instead, just right click on it, mark the object. It asks you for a label. I'm gonna creatively call it my item. Uh, and immediately you'll notice that anywhere that this appears in any of these debugging windows, it's labeled. Now my favorite part of this is if I come over here to a random method, oh, by the way, did you know? You can click on the line gutter and you'll run to that directly. Um, so now I'm in the render method and my uh, item instance, of course, is not in scope. What I could do is come over to the watches window and I can type my label, my item, uh, followed by underscore debug label, but you don't have to worry about remembering it because it auto-completes it for you. Uh, and anywhere in my app, I can actually follow my single instance to see what its state is doing. This is actually very powerful when combined with conditional breakpoints, which we talked about earlier. So this line here is responsible for rendering all of these items. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a breakpoint on the line. Um, I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna set my condition to item equals my item dot debug label. And when I run there, sure enough, uh, you can see that I am actually highlighting my particular item, and I didn't have to step over the breakpoints of the other instances. Now, as long as we're here and we're at a breakpoint, uh, what, what you can do is you can click on this Evaluate Expression button to bring up the Evaluate Expression dialog. Um, it sometimes opens up here in single line mode, so I like to expand it to multiple lines. Uh, like the watches window, you can type in any expression here. So let's just do item.image, and then hit the Evaluate button, and you can browse the object in this uh, object browser below. But you can do richer um, expressions in here as well, like you can create variables, you can use if statements, uh, and let me just go ahead and verify that this is working just by putting in a random ex uh, expression. And there you go. So sometimes the variable and watch windows are great for when you're trying to watch values, evaluate, uh, change over time as you step through the code, but uh, the evaluate expression dialog is really great if you just want a, uh, a live inspection shell that you can see the current state of your app. 
and maybe you're not really sure what you want to debug, but you can you know, dive in by doing these evaluations. All right, I'm going to jump back to some code that, uh, to a breakpoint that Justin said earlier. If you remember, this is the code responsible for uh, colliding with a dessert, and there's a condition on it. As you can see, it's player.health equals one. I'm going to enable it. Now, this is going to be a little bit hard to see in this case, but I'm going to try running into some desserts um, and see if you can notice there's a very slight stutter even when the breakpoint doesn't hit. Let me go ahead and it's a little bit hard to see, but now here on the third one. So even in this case, if you couldn't quite see it, uh, whenever you have a conditional breakpoint, even if you don't stop, the debugger still has to do the work to evaluate that expression. And if this was in the middle of a really tight loop, uh, this might become really noticeable. Uh, unfortunately, there's not really much you could do in that case if this is actually really affecting your debugging experience. So what you just have to do is uh, you know, type the expression out explicitly. I'm just going to put a no op here so I could hook my breakpoint on it. And at this point, I've done the code version of what the conditional breakpoint was here, which I sometimes have to do for performance. This is a point where you might decide to uh, restart your app and re-debug it, uh, or re-hit the, de the debug button. But instead, let's go ahead and use apply changes, which is available in uh, all Android devices, uh, at least running 8.0. Now, uh, what this is going to do is this is going to apply my code patch over. And I want to draw your attention here to the frames window, because it now says obsolete. So what's happened is I used to be in this old version of the update method, and we've pushed over this new version with my, uh, break, with my new code in it. Um, but that being said, the debugger is still stuck in the old one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the drop frame feature we talked about before. I'm going to go out of the old and step back into the new. So here, I verified that, in fact, the, the code has been patched because I hit the breakpoint. I also want to call everyone's attention to this other button up here. So both of these buttons are apply changes. This first one is responsible for patching just code. This second one does the same thing, but it also restarts the activity afterwards. This could be really useful if you modified some layout resources or if the code that you're trying to debug is, for example, in an onCreate method. All right. And finally, despite all of these tips and tricks, you are going to still write some bugs, you're still going to publish them, and you're still going to get bug reports. So if you ever get a bug report that has a call stack in it, here it just looks like a bunch of text. Just copy it, come back over here to Android Studio, click on Analyze. It's really tiny, but Analyze, Analyze, Stack Trace. And it's, you'll see that it already found the value that was in the clipboard. All I have to do is hit OK. It's going to drop my call stack into the uh, console below, fully annotated. So very quickly, I can see that this is my code base versus this is code that I might not have to pay attention to. And of course, you can click on the links to quickly jump through your code base. All right. <laughs> that concludes the demo. Right, so we talked about a lot of different tips today. Um, and there were, as we mentioned before, there were still more that we couldn't fit into this talk. Um, so if you are watching a recording of this video, uh, Please uh, check the description, and we'll try to include some helpful links there. If you are here in person, come talk to us in the sandbox, and we'd love to expound on some of, the, expand on some of these more. Um, if we forgot your favorite debugging tip, please tell us. Leave it in a comment. Tell us in person, because we'd love to know what it is to incorporate it in our own workflow. And with that, thank you all so much.